Hello, everybody. Uh, so let's go over this test together. Um, let's simplify this expression, and all we really need to do is uh, remember that there is an agreed upon order of operations that we need to respect. Otherwise, we're going to get things all out of order. For instance, taking 4x minus 3x and getting x, that doesn't work because 3x is part of this multiplication right here. I'm trying to point in between x and the parentheses. When we have 3x times parentheses, or, or next to parentheses, that implies that we are going to multiply these things together. So I'm not going to subtract this from that before I multiply it by this. right? And these things will become more natural. You'll see how things are just kind of sucked in and tied to each other, uh, particularly when they're multiplied and divided by things. So um, we'll naturally just, like our brains will tell us, don't try and uh, and put this minus 3 with this 4x because it is just kind of sucked together by the order of operations with this parentheses here. So uh, if that's true, if negative 3x needs to be multiplied by the parentheses first, uh, well, let's look inside the parentheses. There's nothing to combine. These are not like terms. It's not 24x because they're not multiplied. It's minus. Uh, I can't subtract 4 from 7x. It's like taking the number 4 from 7 apples. Uh, 4 is very abstract. It's, it's the number 4 and this is very specific, it's 7 of x's, okay? So, what's left to do is multiply negative 3x by the parentheses by using distribution. So we're going to take this guy and distribute it. Alright, so at least we know that. So we know 4x is not part of it quite yet. So we're going to do negative 3x times 7x. Negative 3x times 7x. That's really negative 3 times x times 7 times x. So we can just do negative 3 times 7 times x times x. That's going to be negative 21 times x squared. All right? Nothing magic there. x squared is not, has not magically appeared. It's just the definition of x times x. Or x times x is the definition of x squared. All right? So we've got 4x minus 21x squared. What do we get when we distribute negative 3x to negative 4? Remember that we are distributing negative 3 to negative 4. So negative 3x times 4, that's negative 3 times x times 4, negative 3 times 4 times x, negative 12x minus 12x. Okay, uh, 4x and negative 12x are like terms, and together they make negative, uh, negative 8x. minus 21x squared, or negative 21x squared minus 8x. It doesn't really matter. There we go. We're done. All right, this one. This minus sign is here on purpose, okay? And I say that because a lot of you just ignored it. You just took negative 3x squared minus 9x squared. Why is there this minus sign here, right? It means something. And that's why there's parentheses here, okay? I could just write minus negative 12x squared, but it didn't. Put parentheses around it around this whole thing, that means subtract negative 12x, subtract 13, subtract negative 9x squared. Or in other words, distribute the negative 1 into the parentheses. Everything needs to get subtracted. Everything needs to become the opposite of what it is. So we get negative 3x squared plus 11x plus 12x minus 13 plus 9x squared. And now we can just combine like terms. If they're all there, there's no parentheses, there's no order to respect except for the order of uh, 11 times x before say x plus 12 right so these guys they get kind of grouped together as little little units little terms is what we call them we've got a 9x squared term a negative 3x squared term so we get a total of 6x squared got x here x there so that's going to be um let's see make sure i got this right okay so 30 or sorry 20 3x um, minus 13. All right, this guy here is just kind of a the little this little piece of this problem, right? It's just distribute something into the parentheses, right? and it's going to be a negative 8 that we distribute. So it's going to be negative 16x plus 24, and I just will repeat it here on the answer line. No like terms, nothing to combine. Okay, she has $34 in her pocket when she goes, she shows up for work, uh, where she makes $8 an hour, write an expression for how much money Samantha will have after working X hours, including the $34 she started with. 
Well, she started with $34. She's at work. She's making money, so she's going to add money. How much money will she have? Well, if she works for uh, two hours, she'll have $8 or $16. For three hours, she'll have $24. Four hours, she'll have $32, so on, so on, so on. However many hours she works, you just multiply by 8, right? Well, she works for X hours. So we'll take 8 and multiply by X. There it is. There's an expression. You can say equals the money that she has after. Da, 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 da. You don't have to say equals anything, though. It's just this expression. When I plug in anything for X, will tell me after X hours, that many hours, this is how much money she will have. And, all right, so we're on the next page. We're going to evaluate this when M is equal to the negative 2. We, we could do this lots of different ways, but the most straightforward way would just be plug in negative 2 for M and go for it. 9 times negative 2. Uh, yeah, that's good. Times 4 times negative 2 minus 7. Okay. So we'll just do the order of operations. Uh, 4 times negative 2 first. That'll be negative 8 minus 7. You know, we could also do uh, 9 times negative 2 as well first. Get the same time. Well, negative 18 times negative 15. And negative 18 times negative 15. Top of my head, what that is. Uh, this is fun to listen to, isn't it? It's 270. All right. Uh, we could also distribute this 9m into the parentheses, right? We'll get uh, 36m squared minus. Uh, 63m, we do it that way, 36 times negative 2 squared minus 63 times negative 2. That's going to be, well, negative 2 squared is first, exponents are first. So we'll go ahead and do that. That's going to be positive 4. That's going to be times 36 minus 63 times negative 2. 63 times 2, 126. And it's negative times negative, so it's going to be plus 126. All right, yeah. And I'll bet you that 36 times 4 plus 126 is 270. Okay, uh, so yeah, let's see, that's 4, and that's 2, 4, 2, and 144. Is that? That makes sense. Yeah, so 144 plus 126, I'll bet you that's 270. Verify yourself and comment. And troll my video if I'm wrong. Okay, this is uh, not cooperating. Here we go. So for the next few problems, we are going to fill in this table, plot the points, and then connect the points in the way that it seems the, the graph is taking shape, right? So I'll do negative 5. I'm going to do 0. I'm going to do 5. I'm going to do 10. Okay, we talked about this in class. Uh, for me, it was yesterday. Uh, we're graphing linear functions. Okay, if you want me to be able to follow your work, it's got to be nice and neat. It's got to look something like this. Right? I can definitely follow this. I know that you're plugging negative five in for x, so nice and neat. Uh, so I'm going to get seven. This is five. is going to cancel this five. Negative times negative is positive. I'm going to be adding three. That's going to be ten. So that gives me ten. Put in 0, I don't have to show that work. I put in 0, I'm going to take 7 minus 0, I'm going to get 7. I'll show my work for this guy. 7 minus 3 fifths times 5 over 1. 7, uh, 5 cancel, 3, 7 minus 3, that's 4. 10, y equals 7 minus 3 fifths times 10 over 1. Cancels, okay, just doesn't just cancel 10, it leaves a factor of 2 here, so now I get 7 minus 6. 7 minus 3, 7 minus 6, I bet if I put in 15, I'll be 7 minus 9. But 7 minus 6 is 1, so I'll plot all these points. Negative 5, 10. Negative 5, 10. 0, 7. Uh -huh. uh, 5, 4. 5, 4. And 10, 1. Noticing that I'm just every time I move over four, or sorry, move over five, I'm moving down three. That's kind of interesting. That might be relevant to what we're studying now. There we go. It seems, you know, I should just go back and discuss that real quick for a second. What I'm doing when I'm connecting these points is I'm saying 
I could plug in, say, negative 3, but I don't want to because it, it would just be kind of a nuisance, right? Because then I would have to do this, 7 minus 3 fifths times negative 3. Well, now I'm going to get, uh, well, this negative times negative will be positive, and I'll get this 9 over 5, and that's a fraction that I'm going to have to find a common denominator. This is going to be 35 over 5 plus 9 over 5. This is going to be 44 over 5, and I'm going to have to graph 44 fifths. You know, I, I, you know what? I can tell just by this pattern down and over, down and over, down and over, down and over. This seems to be very predictable for finding another point. And so I must, you know, if I, if I come down this much, I must probably come over this much, and the point is going to be something like right there. I bet 44 fifths is right about there. It seems to just fit the pattern. And if I just keep following this pattern, I bet I'll just keep getting points no matter what. If I, if I plot points in between these points, I'll just get something in this pattern. And I'll get a line. But not all graphs are lines, like this next one. This guy will not be a line. It will be a curve. Let's go ahead and plug some stuff in. I'm going to choose negative 3, negative 2. I like 0. That's an easy one. And I'll plug in 2 again. OK, let's see what happens then. So y equals negative 3 squared minus negative 3 minus 8. A lot of you are having trouble with the negatives. That's, I, I mean, I predicted it. I warned you about it. I, and I, gave you a good tool for avoiding it. Replace every x with an empty set of parentheses, and then put the number that you're trying to plug in for x in for the parentheses. Every time. Do it. Every time. Every, every, every time. OK? It will help you to avoid these kinds of problems. All right? So I'm going to square a number, and I'm going to square what number? This number, negative 3. I'm going to multiply negative 3 by itself. That's going to be positive 9. Negative 3 times negative 3. Minus negative 3. That's plus 3. 8. So 9 minus 8 is 1, plus 3, that's 4. All right, now negative 2. Negative 2 squared minus negative 2 minus 8. That's going to be 4 plus 4 minus 8. <coughs> Not 4, 2 plus 2. Uh, so 6 minus 8, that's negative 2. 0, it's too easy to even show the work. I'm going to put negative 8. Right, 0, 0, minus 8, there we go. And we'll do positive 2. 2 squared minus 2 minus 8. Now, I could put parentheses here. It's just from my experience. You know, I've done this about 80 billion times. And I know that whether I put parentheses around this 2 or not, it's not going to make a difference. I'm going to be squaring positive 2. I'm going to multiply 2 by itself. Okay, So I'm going to get 4 minus 2 minus 8. So it's almost just like this one, except for yeah, when I square a number, it's always going to come out positive, so I'll get positive 4. But this time I do get minus 2, whereas before I got minus negative 2, and it wound up being plus 2. Uh, so here I get negative 8 uh, minus 2 is negative 10, plus 4 is negative 6. All right, so negative 3, 4. There's 4. Negative 2, negative 2. 0, negative 8. I go the way down there. And 2, negative 6. 2, negative 6. Ah, so it seems to be coming down, but not quite in a straight line. And then it comes up like this. Uh, whatever the shape was that you drew here, as long as it was a smooth curve, you should have gotten full credit. If all your whatever values you picked it came out correctly in the y, and you connected these points with a smooth curve that didn't just like become a circle or something like that, because then we're not really thinking about what a graph is. Um, then that was fine. Because what you should be thinking is, when I plot negative 3, I get, or, or when I plug in negative 3, I get 4. When I plug in negative 2, I get negative 2. So when I plug in something between negative 3 and negative 2, what will I get? Well, if I plug in negative 2 and a half, I don't know. It kind of feels like I'm going to get something like this. It feels like I'm going to get like a half or something. Something close to a half, I'll bet. Uh, I'm not going to get something way up here, I don't think. I don't think I'm going to get anything way down here. The truth might be that that happens, that you actually get something way down here. But that would be pretty surprising, right? So whether or not we're exactly correct, that's, that's not exactly what, what matters the most. It's that we're making an educated guess. We're making a guess that makes sense. Okay. I think all the points will come in somewhere along here, and I think 
all these other points between here and this point, they'll come in something like that. And then, and then I think I'm going to get some points lower than that, lower than negative 8, but that eventually the points will start to come back up, and I will get something like that. And for me, I'm going to go beyond that. I'm going to go beyond the points and say, well, I think this trend will continue. I think I'll get points that are bigger and bigger, and the, and the bigger x I put in, the bigger y I'm going to get out. Input and output, input and output. And I think that the bigger negative number, the further left I go, the, you know, if I go to x is negative 5 or negative 10 or negative 20, I am going to keep getting bigger and bigger y values out of the function. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my graph like that. Okay? That's what this is all about. Now, the problem with something like, let me just uh, undo a bunch of this stuff. Go back to this guy. Some of you had stuff like it was on, you know, kind of like that. It's pretty good. And then you just shot it over there. I mean, come on. Think about what a graph is. The only reason a graph, quote, stops here is because that's the x value you chose to put in last, right? Do you think that if you, like, kept going, you wouldn't get another y value somewhere over here? You've, you've stopped the graph and just connected these dots. This is not a coloring book, it's not connect the dots. It's what, if I put this in, what will I get out, okay? And so just really quickly, what your graph is saying, if you have something like this, is if I put in 0, we already know what will happen when I put in 0. When I put in 0, I get out negative 8. But this graph says when I put in 0, I'll get 8, negative 8, and I'll also get negative 2 and a half, negative 3. You see what I'm saying? It's saying that we're going to get out this value right here because a graph is billions and trillions of points you're saying there's a point right there that's why this line exists you're saying there's a point right there which means and if every point represents an input and output I input zero I get out negative two and a half or negative three wherever that point seems to be and I'll also get out negative eight did we get negative two and a half or negative three when you put in zero no we only got negative eight all right you you got to believe me. You got to believe that I know what I'm talking about. And when I say that it's important to think about what a graph is and that it is trillions of points and that every point represents an input and an output, that must be important. It really, really is. Okay? So you have to think about that. You have to think, what am I saying with this graph? And with this graph, I'm saying that for every value that I just plugged in, not only will I get, so for negative 2, not only will I get negative 2, uh, right there, I will also get positive one and a half. Will you? Did we? No, we did not. We only got negative two. Okay? And you're saying for every value in between negative three and two, you will get not only this input, or not only this output, but this output. Not only this output, but also this output. Right? If you don't, if you just want to go through algebra and say, man, whatever, I won't really think about it very hard, it's going to make it even harder. Okay? So think about it. When I say that it's trillions and billions of points and we spend 15, 20, 30 minutes talking about that, it must be important. It must be helpful. Okay, so we're going to find the sum of these following fractions. We need to find the lowest common denominator for all three of these because we can't add together twelfths and twentieths. They're not the same thing. It's like adding puppies and kittens, and you get some kind of abomination when you add them together. It's just not possible. You can't add them together. All right, so how do we find the lowest common denominator? We need to find a number that 12, quote, goes into, or is a factor of, is a better way to say it. 12 is a factor of, 20 is a factor of, and 42 is a factor of. All right, let's take a look at what it takes to make a 12. Well, a 2 and a 6. Uh, to make a 6, you need a 2 and a 3. To multiply together, I see a lot of addition signs. No, we're not adding these together, we're multiplying these together. Okay, 2 times 2 times 3. Uh, 20, what does it take to make a 20? A 4 and a 5. For the 4, it takes a couple of 2s, and I can't break those down anymore, okay? For a 42, it takes a 7 and a 6, and it takes a 2 and a 3 to make a 6. So I need a number, mystery number, that 12 is a factor of, 20 is a factor of, and 42 is a factor of. I could just do 12 times 20 times 42, but that number is going to be way bigger than I need it to be, right? Uh, let's take a look at what that would be. That would be 2 times 2 times 3 to make the 12 times 2 times 2 times 5 to make the 20 times 2 times 3 times 7 
to make the 42. That's way more than I need, right? I just need 12 to be a factor of the number, 20 to be a factor of the number, 42 to be a factor of the number. It needs to be possible to write 12 times some number equals lowest common denominator. All I need for that to happen is to have a 2, a 2, and a 3. Okay, this is 12. So 12 times some other stuff, that's going to work. 12 is going to be a factor of that number, okay? I also need 20 to be a factor of that number. For that, I just need a 2 times 2 times 5, right? What if I just put a 5 in there? I'm saying to you right now, we're not done, but right now we have a number that has 12 as a factor and 20 as a factor, okay? And it's the smallest number that 20 and 12 can both be a factor of, right? This is 12 times 5. It makes, you know, whatever the number it is we're talking about, 60, right? 12 times 5 is, six, is 60. Well, it's also 20, 2 times 2 times 5, 20, this number right here, is 12 times 5. It's also 20 times 3. Right? If I just rearrange the factors, uh, both of these numbers, 12 and 20, are factors of this number. I just recycle these two twos to make the 20 after I, I know that I can use the two twos to make a 12. Right? Okay, so this, this number right here has 12 as a factor and 20 as a factor, but it doesn't have these extra twos like we had before. It's like, we don't need those. We don't need those extra twos. We can use these two twos again to make the 20. Okay. Uh, when I come along and I want to make 42, uh, I do 2 times 3 times 7. But look, I don't, I don't need to multiply a new 2 and a 3. I have a 2 here and a 3 here. I don't even need to use 2 and 3 again. Okay, I only need a factor of 7. I just need to throw in a 7. Because now, uh, this big number is 12 times 35 now that I have a 5 times a 7. 35. This is 20 times 21. Right? If I take 2 times 2 times 5, that's the 20. And then 3 times 7 is 21. And 42 is a factor. This number is 42 times, well, it's 2 times 3 times 7 is 42. And 2 times 5 is 10. It's just 42 times 10. So what is this number? Well, it must be 420. Because four, 42 times 10 is clearly 420. This is 420. This is 420. Right? And I, and I don't even know what 12 times 35 is like off the top of my head, but I do know it's the same as 42 times 10, and that's 420. Okay, so the common denominator is 420. And you know what we've just done? We've figured out what do we multiply 12 by to get the common denominator. I'm going to have to multiply 12 by 35. And multiply 21 by 35 as well. And 20, I'm going to have to multiply that by 21. I'll have to multiply this by 21. Multiply this by 10, multiply this by 10. Okay, let me grab my calculator. Calculator, there you go. All right, so 35 times 21. 735 over 420 plus 19 times 21. 399 over 420 plus 130 because we're multiplying by 10 that's easy 420 we add all those together right they are all 420ths they are all just this is a 735 pieces that are each the size of one 420th right 735 pieces such that 420 of those pieces will make a whole right so we got at least one whole uh, because we have enough of those pieces to make a whole so we take 735 plus 399 plus 130. And we get 1264 over 420. And that would be fine. We should also try and simplify this. So 1264 and 420, uh, you can tell they're both divisible by 4. Okay, so 316 and 420 divided by 4. 105. Uh, let's see. I just don't think that that's that anything's going to go into both of these. So I, don't, I know that's divisible by 5. Let's see. That's 5 times 21. So it's 5 times 7 times 3. So this would need to be divisible by 5 or 7 or 3. Um, it's not divisible by 3 because if I add these up, they don't, they're not divisible by 3. 
Uh, it's not divisible by 5, so we'll just try 7. 316 divided by 7. Nope, it didn't work. So this is it. This is as simplified as it can be. If you didn't know it was divisible by 4, you know it's divisible by 2, that both of these are divisible by 2. And the next one that you got, that those would also be divisible by 2 again. And so you would easily be able to get that. I don't know why that just happened. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase that. Um, oh, I hit the wrong button. That's why. Anyway, so we're going to find the product of these two. You just multiply straight across. Couldn't be any simpler. 21 over 130. <laughs> multiply straight across. Uh, if you need to have that explain why you multiply straight across, then I go over that in, in several different times. I go through it in uh, all of the Algebra 2 lecture videos from the day that I explained that, and uh, both Algebra classes, I went over why we would multiply straight across. Okay, so take a look at that. Uh, coming over here, we, uh, to divide, we multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. I can quickly show you why we do that. Okay, you may remember to multiply by the reciprocal, but you multiply by the wrong reciprocal, which definitely I saw that error being made. Uh, if I multiply the denominator and the numerator by the same thing, which I can do, like that's how we find common denominators, we do it all the time. We multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same thing. This guy right here is worth 1. It's a number divided by itself, so sure, I can multiply by 1. What happens down here? is I get this cross cancellation, or I get 14 times 15 over 15 times 14, which is a number divided by itself, which is 1. So I get 1 down here. So whatever I get here, that's it. That's just it. That's the number. Okay. Uh, but 14 and 12, they have a common factor of 2. So this is 6. This is 7. Common factor of 5. This is 5. This is 3. I can do this much easier. Uh, so I get uh, 18 over 35. So the answer is 18 over 35. Okay, this one, right. There's a lot of problems with this, a lot of trouble with this one. Remember that it, it just comes down to order of operations. Okay, what do we have? We have just two operations. We have the operation raised to a power and the operation times negative 1, okay, multiplied by negative 1. It's really negative 1 times 3 to the 4th. Okay. That doesn't fix a whole lot unless we recognize that there is a, an agreed upon order of operations to follow. The order says do exponents before multiplication. I'm going to multiply by negative 1, but not before I raise 3 to the 4th, meaning I do not get negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. I get 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 and then times negative 1. There's only one negative in there, right? Multiply by negative 1. So don't get too confused that it's negative 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Like, why is there only one of the 3's is negative? It's not really that. It's that 3 is raised to the 4th, and then we multiply that answer by negative 1, right? 3 to the 3rd is 81, times negative 1 is negative 81, okay? On the other hand, to contrast that, right after this question, there is something raised to the fourth, and the negative is in the parentheses, right? There are parentheses telling you, look, I realize that there is this order of operations that says do multiplication after you do uh, exponents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put parentheses around that to supersede that order and say I want the negative to be part of the number that is multiplied by itself four times. So this time we're going to multiply something by itself four times, and what is it? It's clearly by the parentheses negative 2 that is multiplied by itself four times. Here, that's not the case. The negative is not in the parentheses, so it is not superseding the order of operations that we all agree to. It is saying just follow the natural order, take 3 to the fourth, and then multiply by negative 1. Here it's saying multiply 2 by negative 1, get negative 2, and then raise that number to the fourth. So that's going to be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, and that's going to be positive 16. Okay, here's this one. So it's a bit of a doozy, right? We're really testing your order of operations skills. But really, if you, if you remember the, the order of operations, the, the PEMDAS, it will lead you through. It will do fine, OK? Um, as long as you, I mean, in this class and in most places on Earth, we will follow the order.
parentheses first, exponents next, multiplication and division from left to right, addition and subtraction from left to right. It will never lead you wrong as long as the person that you're talking to is agreeing to the same order, okay? They may have some different understanding and if you have a disagreement, say like, okay, yours makes sense your way and mine makes sense my way, all right? But in this class, we should all get the exact same answer if we just do what I just said, all right? So we're looking at all this stuff, and, and look, there's multiplication, there's division, multiplication, multiplication. There's a big group of multiplication and division. We're going to work this from left to right, all right? Then we have this minus 5 squared. So 5 squared is kind of its own little deal, right? So we're going to square that. This is kind of like this minus 3 to the fourth. It's minus whatever 5 squared is. 5 squared is 25. We're going to subtract 25. All right, we come along here, minus 3. No, we're not going to subtract 3 from this because 3 is multiplied by the parentheses. So we're going to, mul we're going to multiply first. Can we multiply that yet? Mm, we could distribute it, but you know we could also just combine these numbers and then just multiply negative three by that number. Whatever we wanna do, okay? Um, if, if you wanna do it that way, that's fine, and I, I won't stop you from doing that, and I'll encourage you to do that. I think that's a great idea. I will also just follow the order of operations so that there is a way to do this, uh, so that whoever it is just wants to get the right answer can get the right answer, the, the agreed upon answer, okay? Inside the parentheses, we've got this guy to an exponent. That's definitely going to happen before anything else. We're not going to subtract, say, 4 minus 6 before we square. We're going to square negative 6. That's going to happen first. Okay, so let's do all this stuff. First, we got negative 4 times 9. That definitely is something that's going to happen in the first step, right? So negative 4 times 9 is negative 36. All right, we're going to divide that by 6. We have to divide that by 6, right? We work from left to right, so we're not going to do 6 times 5 is 30. We're going to divide from left to right, okay? times 5 times 3. Okay, now I know I'm going to divide the 6 by, uh, into this negative 36, and, and then I know I'm going to times that by uh, 5 and then by 3. I, you know, I know that I could multiply this 5 times 3 first, right? Because that's going to be the same thing. Whether I take this times 5 and then times 3, or I take this times 15, it's going to be the same, okay? But I will work it strictly by the order of operations here, All right? Minus, okay, I can do this on this step, right? That is going to be a something that happens before anything else is. This is going to get squared, right? We get three times. All right, this exponent needs to happen first, and you know what? This addition is going to have to happen uh, before. You know, we work it left to right. We're going to add something, but we would add these first. So, we'll go ahead and do that. Nine plus what is negative six squared? Well, it's negative six times negative six. That's thirty-six. Okay, so there's one step down. Negative 36 divided by 6, I just said we're going to work it from left to right, so we are going to do that first. Negative 6 times 5 times 3 minus 25. I can't really, I'm not going to do 3 minus 25 because 3 is times 5. That comes first, so forget about doing that. I'm not going to subtract 3 from negative 25 because the 3 is multiplied by those parentheses. Ah, inside the parentheses, I could add these together. This would be 45 here. All right, coming back through left to right, we're going to do negative 6 times 5. That's negative 30 times 3. Uh, we've got minus 25. We're not going to subtract 25 from 3 because that's still multiplied by negative 30. So. Oh, we could do 30, 3 times 45. So negative 3 times 45 is going to be negative 125. Negative 125. Here. Um, those things I always double check with the calculator. 3 times 45. 135. I thought something was wrong. Negative 135. Okay. Uh, we have to multiply these first. We're almost down to where we just do addition and subtraction uh, all the way across. So we get negative 90 here. Negative 90 minus 25 minus 135. You know what? We're not in third grade anymore. And we should know how to subtract these. And certainly if somebody asked me to, I could do it. But I'm going to save myself the time. Negative 250. And we're done. Okay. You notice every step of the way, I respected PEMDAS. And it did work. I am not a big fan of PEMDAS, but you know, without PEMDAS or some kind of agreed upon order of operation, what would we have? An insane number of parentheses, okay? But to argue that somebody is right and somebody's wrong, it's hard to do. We're just saying you're not following the same order that I'm following. Uh, we disagree because of that, okay? So it does cause some little confusion and all that kind of stuff, um, but whatever. So work it from left to right, multiplication and division, left to right. I threw that division in there to see if you would do that. You know, it was kind of a trick, but uh, 
without that, we won't know if we really know what we're supposed to know. All right, so what's a graph made of? Uh, points. An infinite number of points. Maybe you said billions of points, or trillions of points, or thousands of points, or lots of points, or points and points and points and points. Yes. If you say, like, data, no, it, it, it's, I mean, there are graphs that are made of data, of course. But we're not in a science class. We're not in statistics class. We're not in physics class. We're not in chemistry. We are in math. And in math, a graph is a picture of a function. It's not a picture of a data set. It's a picture of a function, OK? So the function is perfect. The function is not all scattered all over the place like data is, OK? And even really, that data is made of a bunch of points. But a, a function graph, like something like this, oh, it's beautiful, it's perfect, it's curvy, it's, uh, it's connected, it's not all over the place, it's not random, it, uh, it follows a very specific rule, um, and uh, it doesn't get out of line, um, it doesn't go all jagged, uh, it's perfect. It's made of a bunch of points. Okay, When we see that curve, when somebody graphs this curve, like I just did, they're graphing billions and trillions and quadrillions and pentillions of points, okay? Just tons and tons of points. And that's what connects together to make this nice, smooth, curvy thing, okay? So it's made of an infinite number of points, or trillions of points, or millions of points, or whatever you said, okay? As long as it lots, lots and lots of points. Looks like that's it. It's one, two, three pages. So yes. Um, that is it. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them. Um, I, you know, I would love to go over all this in class just forever and ever and ever until everybody was perfect at it. We just don't have that kind of time, unfortunately. I wish I had a time freezer uh, and then we could freeze time. That's something I often think about. Uh, we use it for lots of different uh, applications, but we just don't have one. Um, they, Amazon doesn't have that. Uh, so for now, uh, this kind of a thing will have to suffice. And you can go over it, you can go over it with me uh, before or after school, absolutely. Please come in and do that. Um, but uh, I hope this video was helpful and I really appreciate you watching.